All right, gentlemen, here we are. This is uh, period two. This first game, Kennedy versus Minnehaha Academy. Friday, July 19, 2013. Bingo, bango, bongo. We got a goal right off the bat. Yeah, sure was. So, Mark McGinnis just signaled goal, reporting the goal. Matt is uh, center ice there, controlling line change, and Freddie Johnson is linesman dropping the biscuit. Alright. You're going to have to excuse me here the first few minutes. I'm working on my multitasking, which I've been told by my wife that I'm not very good at. And trying to situate myself with the uh, walkie-talkie job and recording at the same time. All right, in this setting here, this setting being a summer camp or a summer game, I'm gonna have the expectation of all about battling the first 10 feet. Yeah, I use a term all the time, work for the puck, work for the check, work in a good sight line, which is what Mark is doing very well here. But the first 10 feet is crucial. Now normally in the game, okay, we got a 200 by 85, actually 200 by 100 ice surface here, and I expect you to battle all feet of that. Mark, that was just an example. Picking your spot, finding the seam a little bit better. It's all about getting used to working within traffic. It's a skill that may seem obvious, basic. Alright, here's some fancy camera work. There's my shoe. Oh, there's my face. Sorry. Cameraman apologizes. Like I said, I'm still getting situated here. Uh, I got some skill set to work on here. Okay. Still wobbly wiggly wee. Uh, through all that wobbly wiggly, Fred, give me some good hard C cuts come out of the zone there when you drop the biscuit. Good read on the blue line there, way to hold Matt. That's, uh, you know, something somewhat unique to this system, but it's also something that we need to uh, work on read and play. There's so much art as opposed to science involved in this system. And being the artist and being able to read, play, and anticipate and be in the right positions and have things covered when things aren't always black and white, there's a lot of gray area. That uh, bodes well for developing a good skill set. You know what I mean? If your duties are always defined black and white it's very easy to be robot like whereas one advantage to this system that I see is uh, having a lot of that gray area to see how you react and position yourself anticipate and so forth and of course um, say it all the time as we watch here you know I'm making general comments Overall, uh, you be critical of yourself as well. See yourself, ask yourself, is that what I thought I was doing, and so forth. You be your own uh, self-evaluator. Should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway.
Man, that's a good little movement there. I like how play was going at net and you're sliding towards the net. Too many guys, you know, they get this basic uh, mechanic mindset of plays on my side, I stay stapled to the boards. Plays on the other side, I move towards home base. When it looks like we're going to have a potential scoring opportunity, moving towards the net is a move I like. It's real subtle, real little. It's always the little things, right, guys? But, um, okay, we didn't see it very well on the videotape there, but uh, I definitely think uh, White could have played that one. He, uh, he's at least got to fake it that he's making an effort. Okay, I'm talking about uh, specific 2-1 positioning, uh, face-offs. Uh, I made the statement earlier that it's not really my goal to uh, teach 2-1 system so much as it is to develop some skills. Um, I like for this setup having a 2-1 because I can try to develop, for the most part, everybody uh, Everybody train as if you're a referee in the one-two. You hear me make a lot of comments into the wireless equipment. It is what it is. Okay, boom, Freddy, we should be in there like stink on you know what. Give me a good first dip, jump. Let's worry about players first. Broken twigs second or third. It's a little thing. It's always the little things, fellas. By the way, I'm liking this rink. They got pretty good tunes here between. Good job. So saith the cameraman. I agree. Um, that was one example there where you don't quite get the switch in or play leaves end zone early and you, as a referee you're backing up. That's fine. Okay. Um, right there, Mark. That's something we should probably have talked about with our partner who's not used to that. It's kind of a, I'm going to call it a new thing with uh, icings as you point at your partner like, yep, you got it. Do you have it? Yes or no? And then they can give you a signal one way or another. I like that, not all the time, because I'm always a big fan of we signal for purpose and we don't just do things automatically every single time 100%. But uh, working with a new partner here, Fred probably had no idea what you meant when you're pointing at him. Down in front, you cheeky jacks. It's a good job getting the goal line there. Yeah, I didn't see that turn. He was rather than come in and lock up the brakes like you would on a. There was a carried in offside, Fredo. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. They carried it in over on the other side. Um, I got to remember to talk to you about this today. Let, we got nine dots to deal with. We should be 100%. When it's USA Hockey and we're not dealing with nine dots, face-off locations really sell yourself or in a good or bad way of what you if you know what you're really going on. So the puck was carried in over on the bench side. Face off should have been on that side. Not where the player was offside. Yo, cameraman. Uh, this is the second period of game one already. And Fred, I'm going to say your timing got a lot better. And it got a lot better as the game went along about timing that attacking line. That is definitely the art 
the artist part versus scientist with this system always having an idea where your partners are at all times and switching when needed and appropriate so good I like that My wife did an adult tap class recital to this song. Can you imagine it? Tap dancing to this song? Whatever, useless information. I think your dance instructor likes all these hip hop songs for dance. Tap dance. Adult. Okay, good trail of play there for the lead referee. Good hit. Good play at the line. Good job coming in. Coming in and being somewhat of a presence. Okay, this is the one we're talking about. I'm going to back this up a little bit. 13 comes in there. It comes in the net hard, but it blows up a Kennedy kid. No, 16 does. 13 is our not head. I believe you give him 2 and 10 here. 2 for rough. Nope. That's later he gets his, uh... yeah. but I'm going to go back and take a look at that. Uh, maybe not so much. I went back and looked at it. I think he was just offsetting a little bit. He wasn't being total knothead. So, I, uh, I'm okay with the coincidental. Just uh, planting a seed in your guys' brains. It's not always best to go with coincidental. Find a differential if you can. Uh, that one there, at first blush, it looked like we should have had a differential, but uh, second look, I say not so much. All right, here. Uh, that's an example there where anticipation of footwork could have been a little bit better. I got no problem. I don't want guys doing it all the time. Mark, you do it a little too much. Where if they're coming at you and you run out of space to do a quick pirouette job to get out of there and stay out of harm's way, yet maintain your good sight line. Yes, that's in. No, he did not save it. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. This is one where uh, they admitted this. The referee's got a little twisted up. It's all right.
And I say it's all right because it's just a procedural thing within this system that, you know, it's, it's not a skill breakdown. That's what I'm saying. Call this a skills camp on purpose. Because uh, developing the skills is what will carry over to any system regardless of what you're working. It could have. And we get the biscuit in the basket. This game, uh, neither team could really pull away from the other one. Okay, right there, Matty. You did a good job of not watching the puck carrier because he's not going to commit an infraction against himself, but you put yourself in a position where you kind of picked a guy. He had, to, he had to force his way around you to get a pass, so we got to be a little bit more aware of that to get ourselves in uh, a position where we not tunnel vision, but yet at the same time, we're aware of everybody around us and maintain a good sight line. I think you guys did well, uh, you guys being Matt and Mark. Hey, down in front, Jicky Jack. Um, you had great eye contact and presence and communication on your line change procedures. So keep that up. Yeah, some supervisors will be uh, all about, well, don't point, and then raise your arm and do this. You know what? As long as you're consistent and, you know, in a position where you got eye contact and you're sending the same message over and over again, I don't really give a good god darn if uh, you point at a bench and then raise your arm and do this and that. And I'm just going to say supervisors who pick on that are guys who can't find anything else to watch. So if a guy d tells you to do it one way, do it one way. When in Rome, do what Caesar wants. And we got another goal. I always do what Caesar wants. Yeah, this is when uh, the goalie starts checking out. Oh, this sucks. I don't want to be here. It's nice night, summertime. I'd rather be at home playing Call of Duty rather than being at this rink. Alright gents, nice job, see you on the next game.